Today I'm out on the streets again and it is quite an interesting one. And if you've ever been in the touristy parts of Bangkok pre-2020, especially Khao San Road, you're in for a shock. I have the 85mm f1.8 on the A7 III and because of that rain, I've put the lens hood on to try to stop getting water droplets on that front element. Wow. So the last time we were coming down here was about three or four years ago. This was jam packed with tourists. Now it's empty and lots of things are really boarded up. It's pretty crazy. I've decided to take out the 85 mm to see if this longer focal length helps build my confidence in photographing strangers and people out on the streets. Right, come in. No matter what I'm photographing, it always does take me a while to warm up, whether it's sports, portraits or street. So we started on the street that heads down to Khao San Road from the Navalai Hotel. I've left a link in the description below so you can see where we are on Google Maps. Now, I seem to keep doing these low down shots. I love getting the foreground out of focus with this lens low to the ground. I do take a few of these today, but can you guess how many? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Always like a low down shot. Also, when shooting in the rain, if the floor is wet enough, you can get some really cool reflections. Probably a little bit cliched, but good fun regardless. So last time we were here, we ate here. This is bustling, tables and chairs outside. It was a really good night. Yes, yeah, so it's a shame to see it closed down completely. Wow, let's go under here. Oh. As it is cloudy and quite dark, and a lot darker than it looks in this video, I was struggling with my settings a little bit. I'm definitely out of practice after not doing many shoots through the pandemic, and I'm still warming up at this point, so that's why I'm not quite getting the photos that I want to. But if you feel like you're taking rubbish shots to start with, that's okay. We all do this. It's just that not many people own up to it or show any of their rubbish photographs. Kosan Road is like that way, isn't it? Yeah. If you are thinking of going out in the rain, I'd either suggest getting a raincoat for your camera or making sure where you are going has a fair bit of cover like under these awnings. See, I told you I would take a lot of these low down shots, but with that floor being so wet, the reflections are really cool, so it's really hard to resist, especially with the headlights and street lights. Now with the reach of that 85 mm lens, straight away I do feel a little bit more confident. I can be a little bit further away from the subject and still get good framing of that subject. One thing I am finding is that you really have to be aware of what's going on around you. There was a lady walking on the other side of the street at this point, so I thought it would make a great shot with her between the two cars. So I set the focus, waited for her to walk through the frame and then very quickly got the shot. Then very quickly I spotted a tuk-tuk coming and even though it's probably a cliched shot again for Bangkok, it's another shot that's hard to resist. Now this is Khao San Road. It's really shocking to see it like this during the pandemic. We were here in 2017 and it was so different. Full of people, full of street vendors and full of life. Now it's a sleepy street in Bangkok with some pretty kite covers over the top, a new paved surface and some bollards. Now it will be interesting to see when a lot of the tourists do come back to this area and it gets busy again. But for now, it really is a sleepy street.
One thing I found with the 85mm was that I would have to back away a little bit to get the right framing for bigger things, like this entrance to greens and cheese. Life does still go on for the locals, like getting your hair done on the side of the street, but the temperature isn't bad at all, so it's probably a really nice place to do it. Everything's getting wet. This shot was one of my favorites for the day. This guy was on his phone with the shutter to his restaurant half open. He didn't care about me being there and I got a shot of him in a quite natural pose. This kind of reflects the times of things being closed and mobile phone life. You really do have to keep looking around when out on the streets. There was a bike coming up behind us and this single point perspective really seemed to work for me with a bike in the distance. So I found someone to take a portrait of. A first portrait. <laughs> I think I had it on auto ISO for this, but that meant it was harder to close the aperture down and slow that shutter speed down to get some panning shots. I did wish I'd have had a slower shutter speed for this one. So I think for me in between shots, I need to check my camera and check the settings just to see what they're on. Now these street sweepers were stepping out onto the road every now and then. So I was racing to get a photo of them in the streets. Now, one of the problems with doing these low down shots in the rain is that you do get a little bit of splashback and no one likes any kind of splashback. With this shot, there was a lot going on. The parked bike, the guy in the background and the cars going past. So much to think about. So I did take a few different shots and I focused on a few different points. One thing I'm finding is that if I see someone interesting, I'll take a shot from a distance, then get closer and take another, and then try and get closer again. This means I can normally get the shot in the bag from far away, and then try to improve on it by getting closer to my subject. Now, as we came around this corner, I spotted a guy pondering life outside his cafe to the left. So my wife and I chatted a little bit, stopped for a bit, and after checking to make sure my settings were kind of okay, I got a shot of him. This is my favorite of the day, and I like his choice of headwear and the lack of caring what others think. Which one, where are you looking? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, we headed up Rambutri Alley, and this is another road that is normally bustling with life. But apart from those few street vendors on the corner, it was completely shut down.
There was the odd person walking around, but nothing more than that. Again, this is a really dark alley, and with those thick clouds above us, it made it even darker. So this made the shooting conditions really challenging. At this point, I did lose control of my settings a little. As it was so dark, I bumped my ISO up to 16,000, but then shooting back into the brighter parts of the street, this pushed my shutter speed up quite a lot. I am wet, camera's wet. This does make me think that for most of my photography career, I've either shot in relatively low pressured environments or very controlled environments. So street photography is really teaching me about what I need to work on with my photography. And that's controlling those settings when the conditions are all over the place. As I carried on from this point, I promptly forgot about my settings and left them there for the next couple of shots. This really does tell me that I'm out of practice and it's that damn pandemic that has done this. But I'm keeping this section in as I'm trying to show you the real things that can actually happen when shooting in haphazard conditions. And I'm hoping that you can learn from my mistakes. And that's what this is all about. You're following me along on my street photography journey, mistakes and all. <laughs> Hello. One thing I found is when I'm out and about, I've always got time for friendly dogs. And this one was very friendly. He even spotted us a mile away and was waiting for us to come to him. And if you're a dog owner, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes there is so much going on around that you really have to step back and just let it all go by. And then once relaxed, you'll spot something to shoot. It really is like hunting for photographs. Also, a lot of the time, it's about grabbing those moments as they pass, like this guy on the bike. I thought he'd spotted me taking a photograph of him and was coming to ask me why I was taking photographs, but he didn't really care at all. And things like this really do help boost my confidence. As I was walking past these blue shutters, I spotted a man working within his shop. So with a bit of encouragement from my wife, I went back and got the shot. And I did mess up the settings once again. Look about my start up. Hello? Damn it. What is that then? Why is it an ISO 64 auto? So I switched it back to ISO auto with that limit of 8,000 and then I went back again for another shot. And I'm glad I did. This is one of my favorites and it really shows how he's in the zone and truly focused on what he's doing. A longer lens would have helped though, as I had to crop in on this one to get the framing I wanted. But I got a shot of the guy and I'm really happy with that. On this second shoot, I was starting to find that people are just going about their lives on the streets. And with a bit of confidence, you can get some candid shots of people on the streets. And that makes for some great subjects. It seems like with street photography, you have all of these issues and all of these concerns about people approaching you if you're taking photographs of them, but people really don't care what you're doing. Or at least in Bangkok, they don't care what you're doing anyway. This lady was minding her own business and so I got a shot of her before she spotted us. And I think that's the key, getting those shots before people notice you if you want that candid look or let them see you and then they just kind of keep on doing what they're doing and then you take another photograph of them. And this longer focal length of 85 millimeter does seem to help. Then it's just a case of being very aware of what's going on around you and also being ready to get a photograph of it. So you need to be aware of your surroundings 
and of your camera settings. Where is this 7-Eleven? Over, yeah, yeah, I got it. For the guy in the middle of the street. Towards the end of our walk, it did start to pour down again. And I spotted this guy on his bike coming up the middle of the road. And of course, I did a low down shot again. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Street photography is proving to be a really fun genre of photography. To start with, I really wasn't into doing this, but after a couple of sessions, I am starting to enjoy it a lot. If you're struggling with it, try a longer focal length, as for me, this has definitely been a confidence builder. Also, I'm starting to realise that my photography up until now has been very controlled, from portraits in a studio or in a place where I can control that light completely, to sporting events with lots of light, where you are free to play with the settings and get what you want, without hitting those limits of any of those settings too much. It is hard to see in this video, as the POV camera brightens everything up, but it was very dark at times. With the shutter as low as I could get it for handheld with an 85mm, the aperture as wide as possible at f1.8, I really had to keep an eye on my ISO, and at times it did get the better of me. So I can see why street photography would be a good way to train for events photography and wedding photography, where you have that unpredictability of the lighting, of the subjects, and of any kind of situation that you're shooting in. I now know what I need to work on to get better as a photographer. And that's the thing with photography, if you do change it up and you do try different genres, you'll widen your scope and you'll broaden your skill base. Now let me know in the comments below what you think and how you're getting on with street photography if you're doing it or if you're thinking of doing it. And if you're struggling with your settings, you should watch this video next. It'll really help you get a better understanding of your camera, of your settings, and then really take control so you get the photos that you want.